Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Sunday, September the 26th, 2021. It is currently 4.48 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live once again from the empty sanctuary of Victory Baptist Church located right here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Right here in front of me, I have a copy of The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis, and we are in book two, chapter one. Let me see if I can find it here. Yes, chapter one of book two, which is called The Inward Life. And I, I have the book open and I, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, first of all, about time, right? Because it's been a big delay since part one. And now you are, here you are with part two and it's been so long. I don't know if I even remember part one. I'm with you. I understand that. And you may be thinking, so just get started. But, but I really can't get started here because I, I want to, I want to, I want to share something with you. Okay. Because I, I think this is important for you to understand. Um, podcasting. As much content as I put out. Now, I don't, I, I don't, think, I, I don't think I ever get emails. I don't think, I, maybe I've only received it. Maybe I've received a couple of emails over all the years that I have been turning on microphones and talking, which is a very, very, very long time. I think a few times I've received emails with people going, how do you do it? How that is, you put out so much content, it's absolutely crazy. I think for most people, there is just kind of, oh, well, he puts out lots of content. Okay, great. But I I, I don't know if people really realize how difficult it really is. It's a lot of work to put out the amount of content I do. I know that that there there in one sense. There, I, in one sense, I will acknowledge just the way my brain works that there, that maybe it's easier than maybe it would be for some people. I will, well, I will acknowledge that because I do have the ability just, you know, I don't even need any notes, just turn on the microphone and I can talk for an hour. I, I, I can do that. But when you are driving, you know, 20 minutes one way and 20 minutes back home and you come out here day in, day out, day in, day out, talk, 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 cover this, talk this, talk about this, do this, do this, Bible study, preparing sermons, preach, teach, Sunday school, preach, teach, Bible study exercises, news commentary, go, 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 go. That You reach a, a level where at sometimes you're like, wow, how, how am I even doing this? And then you, you realize just at, at times how difficult it, be, and it can become. And the reason I'm mentioning that right now is because I really feel it. I really feel that reality deep in in me right now, which I'm doing this on purpose. Okay, this is not just for me to talk about the difficulty in podcasting so that you feel sorry. I'm not doing that. There's a reason here. This is connected to what we're talking about because we're in a chapter dealing with the inward life. And the inward life is really, think about it. You live a life externally and then you live a life internally. And internally, there are times I really feel overwhelmed and the pressure of like, wow, how do I, you know, I got, I got to do this and I need to cover this and I need to cover this and I need to do this. And, I, and at times it's a little overwhelming. Now, a lot, I'm, I'm, I'm much better than I used to be. Used to be, it it literally led me to a breaking point. It, it was it was devastating, and 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 the reason I'm mentioning some of this is I just read a lengthy article about people's mental health and podcasting and how some people just cave in under the pressure, um, and and I and I've experienced that that it can just be overwhelming. Now I'm I'm a little bit better. You know what? I'm just not going to go to the church today. I'm just I'm just not going to go. I'm not going to do anything. Or I'm just going to go do one thing. I, I've tried to pull back a little bit, knowing trying to know that limit. But I I really feel it today. And here's the reason I feel it so much. We've been working through the imitation of Christ for a very long time, right? And we've reached book two. So in one sense, I felt like a, a, a sense of accomplishment. We finished all of book one. So there was a sense of accomplishment. Then there, then there was kind of a little bit like, oh, okay. oh wait, we've we got a long ways to go. I, then it was like, okay, oh boy, I I got I got I got to really how how am I going to get this done? And then I started feeling like, okay, I need to dedicate like 
literal like multiple days to just doing the imitation of Christ, doing the imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis, covering it an episode after episode after episode. But then I'm like, wait a minute, I got all of these other things to do. So I started filling it for that. But then when I turned to book two and I saw the title of the chapter, The Inward Life, I immediately felt, oh man, like a a little overwhelmed. Like how... How do I handle this subject? How do I really try to deal with this? Because the inward life is a very big concept. There's been lots of books written about this concept throughout church history. In fact, I pulled up my Kindle and started checking uh, the Kindle store and just checking a lot of different sources, finding out, oh, here's a, a very important book in church history on the inward life. And I'm like, okay, well, if I, if I, if I start pursuing that, then we're never going to get back to here. How much of that do I need to bring? And then I'm like, okay. So then I went back and listened to the part one that I did. And then I'm like, I didn't really do a very good job. And it just starts like, so so what do I do? And so then it just started like, okay, I, I'll wait, I'll wait. And then I realized it's been too long. Now, now I have to jump back in, but I don't know if I still feel that I know exactly what to give you for this subject. Because the inward life is a very important concept. So I'm going to define the inward life as the life I live externally. Externally, I'm, now I'm going to take all of this illustration and put it together. Externally, it's just I'm sitting here, turn on the microphone, and I just preach, 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 talk, 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 commentary, 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 go, 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 go. And you just sit on the other side going, okay, well, he sounds great. Okay, give me more content. Give me more content. Give me more content. Give me more content. You don't see the internal. The internal is me going, oh man, okay, all right, whoa, how much, how many hours of broadcasting did I do today? And then I never feel like it's enough. I always feel like, well, man, I needed to do another 30 minutes. I needed to do another hour. So then I'm, it's like, I never feel like it's enough. So then I I live with this weight. Okay, now I've got to deal with the inward life. Okay, well, well, how do I deal with that adequately? Because this could be a a year long study just on the inward life. Well, what does Thomas Akempis do with it? If I just go with what Thomas Akempis does, are people really going to understand it? Wait, am I really, am I accomplishing anything? And then you just start like going, you know, in circles and a downward spiral into nowhere, into the abyss. So that's the inward life. The external life, no, it's just what you put forth. The internal is what nobody sees. Nobody sees the struggle, the doubt, the confusion, the frustration, the anger, the worry, the anxiety, whatever it may be. You, you, we're good at covering all of that up but we have to deal with the reality of the inward life. Your spiritual life is made up not only of the external, which you put forth and you show everyone, but I cannot stress this enough. Your spiritual journey also involves what's going on inwardly, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what doubts you're hiding, what struggles That is a part of your spiritual life, and the emphasis here is on the inward life. I hope that all makes sense, but I wanted to start with expressing inwardly what I feel right. Right now, you know what I feel? Do I, what do I do? I mean, I I don't know what to do. Should I even turn on the microphone? Does anyone even care anymore? Maybe everyone's already forgotten about the series and I should just stop. What do I do? 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 And it's always hard because on one hand, Let's be honest. Most of the people on the other side of this microphone, they don't really care. I mean, I mean, from a from a from a in this sense, they they can't care. They got their own life, and they're and they're just looking on their podcast app, going, "Is there another con- Is there another episode that they, they don't they can't feel from this side?" There's things going on in your life that, in a sense, I don't care in a sense because I don't know and I don't understand it. So that's just the reality. So. Then you're like, well, wait a minute. If they don't really care, then am I really doing anything? You see, you can just go spiral out of control. And when the inward starts spiraling out of control, that's detrimental to one's spiritual life, no matter what the situation may be. I hope that all makes some kind of sense because I wanted to bring this all together. Now, we made it in my edition to page 64 in our last episode, but I'm just going to go back and start reading and get us to where we stopped. All right. And I'm not going to try to offer much commentary. I'm just going to try to to get us there because I think at least that's a decent intro. I will give it a two stars out of five. 
I think it's decent because at least it gives you the idea of the external and the internal. That's the way I'm, I'm trying to explain the inward life. The external life is what you live outwardly. The inward life is what you live inwardly. And then trying to give you an illustration of the contrast between the external and the internal. Hopefully, I somewhat. I know when you have to explain what you're trying to do, it may actually take away from it being powerful. But I, I really want people to understand the point I'm trying to get across here. All right. So page 63, The Inward Life, chapter one, book two of the of the Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. Are you ready? Now, hopefully, I probably should have just started off a little bit clearer what we were doing, but at this point, this is like part, I don't know, 900, okay? So I'm assuming at, at this point, anyone listening knows that we've been covering the Imitation of Christ now for over a year, okay? So here we go. The Inward Life. The kingdom of God is within you, saith the Lord. Turn with your whole heart unto the Lord and forsake this wretched world and your soul shall find rest. Learn to despise outward things and to give yourself to things inward and you shall perceive the kingdom of God to come in you. For the kingdom of God is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, which is not given to the unholy. Christ will come to you and show you his consolation if you prepare for him a worthy abode within. All his glory and beauty are from within, and there his, he delights himself. He often visits the inward man and has sweet discourse, pleasant solace, and much peace, familiarity, and exceedingly wonderful familiar. Okay, let me read this again. He often visits the inward man and has sweet discourse, pleasant solace, much peace, familiarity, exceedingly wonderful with him. Thomas Akempis is saying this is all what happens inside of us. And the inward life is where we experience this tranquility, this this, uh, familiarity, exceedingly wonderful within him. This is where we experience, where we live this out. O oh, faithful soul, make ready your heart for his bridegroom, that he may vouchsafe to come and dwell with you. For thus saith he, if a man love me, he will keep my words and will come unto him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now, there's a lot of scriptural references here that I'm not stopping to read. Uh, maybe I should, but I'm, I'm just trying to see where Thomas Akempis is going here. That's why I'm approaching it a little different here. Give therefore a place unto Christ and deny entrance to all others. Now, this is inter- interesting. Well, we didn't spend a lot of time with this concept, but I want, I want us to kind of go back to this. The Bible talks about keeping the heart, right? Protecting your heart, right? Because from the heart flows the issues of life, right? Protecting the heart, protecting the mind and protecting the heart, protecting the inward part. And he says, give therefore a place unto Christ. Give Christ access to the inward person of you and deny entrance to all others. Inwardly, does Christ Christ get the preeminence? Does Christ get the preeminence in your inward life or in your inward life, do you give the preeminence to thoughts, ideas, feelings, desires that you never demonstrate externally. Therefore, inwardly, Christ doesn't have the preeminence. Externally, you make it appear that Christ has the preeminence, but internally, other things are dominating. Other things are controlling. Other things are consuming. When you have Christ, you are rich and have enough. He himself will be your provider and faithful steward in all things so that you need not trust in men. For men soon change and quickly fail, but Christ abideth forever. Inwardly, you need to, Christ needs to have such preeminence that you realize you are rich because you have Christ and that your trust is in Christ and not in men because men change and will quickly fail you. And that's just an important concept. Apart from the inward life concept, you've got to, your, your trust has to be in Christ. All people, every person 
every preacher, every spouse, every child, every boss, every friend, every acquaintance will ultimately let you down and fail you. I will fail you. You will fail me because we are all sinners. That's just the human condition. All right. Christ abided forever uh, forever and stands by us firmly unto the end. There is no great trust to be put in a frail and mortal man. Even though he is profitable and dear unto us. Listen to this again. There is no great trust to be put in a frail and mortal man. Now, again, I want, I'm going to keep putting this back inwardly. Inwardly, who are you trusting in? Inwardly, who are you relying in, relying on? Inwardly, who are you loving? Inwardly, who do you desire? Inwardly, who do you have a passion for? It's not the external demonstration of what may, because a lot of times what we put forth externally does not reflect what is true internally. There is no great trust to be put in a frail and mortal man, even though he is profitable and dear unto us. Neither ought we to be much grieved if sometimes he cross and contradict us. I want you to hear that again. Neither ought we to be much grieved if sometime he cross and contradict us. I'm going to stop right here. This is a very profound idea. Now you can, we can have a long discussion here about exactly how we are to pull this off. But he is saying that, look, when people contradict us, when people grieve us, um, I'm I'm going to find this again. Um, We we should not be much grieved and, uh, if sometimes he cross and contradicts us, we should not be much grieved. There should be not much grief and, and, and ups, being upset, sadness, frustration, or anger when someone crosses us or um, contradicts us. Why should there not be much grief? There should be not much grief, and I hate to say this, there should not be much grief when, when it occurs, not if it occurs, when it occurs, because we should already have the theological understanding that it's going to occur. It is September, right? It is September. Now, I don't know what this winter is going to be like here in Texas. Last year, if you, you probably were watching the news, we got this absolutely insane period of crazy freezing temperatures. It was insane. We lost power. We lost water. It was crazy. You've probably heard about the Texas power grid that went down. It was nuts. It was absolutely insane. Okay. And there was much grief. (laughs) There was much frustration. There was much anger. And part of the reason is, well, we're in Texas. We shouldn't be going through this in Texas, right? We, we, there, there, it was an unexpected thing, right? We're not, in many areas of Texas, you're just not prepared for that. But if you live, for example, somewhere right next to the ocean, in an ocean where there are frequent hurricanes, now, it's still going to be irritated, it's still going to be bothered, but can you be that bothered knowing that you're living in an area that is prone for hurricanes? I mean, you, you can, you're still going to be bothered, but shouldn't there be some built-in expectation that if I live here, there's a high probability at some point in 20 years, 30 years, that my house is going to be negatively impacted by a hurricane or a tropical storm? I mean, it, I mean don't you think that there, that, that's, that there, there has to be an expectation for that? Therefore, should minimize maybe how you react? If you live in an area like, there's never been a hurricane here in a hundred years and you live, move there and then boom, every, you're going to be like, oh, for crying out loud, a hundred years, there's never been a hurricane here and now, now my house gets destroyed by one. In a sense that you were not prepared. You were not prepared. We have to be built into us as Christians, 
People are going to let us down. They're going to fell us. They're going to double cross us. They're going to lie to us. They're going to lie about us. They're going to gossip. They're going to slander. They're going to say horrible things about us. Now that doesn't excuse the behavior. Doesn't mean that you can't acknowledge you being upset about it because I'm not saying that you put on a fake mask and externally going, oh, praise God, everything's wonderful because I'm supposed to expect this. No, I'm saying that inwardly, we should not be so moved by it because there should be such a built-in theological understanding of the nature of man that we come to expect it. Now, some people say that would give you a very cynical view about humanity and that that could be psychologically not a positive thing, but from a theological way, that well, that's at least where he's te- uh, leading us. And let me read it again. Thomas Akempis. Neither ought we to be much grieved if sometimes he cross and contradicts us. They that today are with you, tomorrow may be against you. And often again, they turn around like the wind. That... <laughs> To those who are with you today are going to be tomorrow against you, and then they're going to turn back around like the wind. That's the way we have to understand humanity. I think the doctrine of total depravity, understanding the true nature of man, is such a comforting doctrine, at least in understanding what you're dealing with, not only in others, but in your own self. Put all your trust in God. Let him be your fear and your love. He himself shall answer for you and will do in all things what is best for you. You have not a continuing city here. Oh, that's that's, that's a powerful statement. All right, so let's go through this. As a Christian, inwardly, I'm asking you inwardly, how much trust, love, and just an expectation that people are going to do what's right to you, for you, by you. How much of that is built inside of you so that as soon as it goes wrong, you become so devastated, angry, hurt, frustrated, and it has a detrimental view or detrimental impact on your spiritual life. You need not be disrupted in your spiritual life inwardly if inwardly you realize you cannot trust anyone and that you understand that they're going to let you down. Now, again, you've got to, there's got to be a balance here because you can live your life in such a way, I don't trust anyone, I, that it almost becomes a negative thing. There's a balance here that, okay, I, I'm going to trust them as long as they give me no reason not to trust them, but I know that ultimately they're going to let me down like everyone else does. But, but I don't allow that to give me a, I'm still, listen, even though I know they're going to let me down, I'm still supposed to love them and love even my enemy and turn the other cheek and bless them that persecute me and you and, and, and would use me. That, that's the Christian, the Christian idea is, is you're cynical in one side because you know people will let you down, but on the other side, you respond to their failure and their handling things wrong with love, forgiveness, and compassion. It's a really hard path to walk, but if you don't have the right thinking inwardly, you will be disrupted in your spiritual life. So what are we to do? We are to put all of our trust in God. It's all of your trust in God. Let him be your fear. Stop right there. What do you fear the most inwardly? Do you fear the disapproval of man? Do you fear being mocked? Do you fear negative opinions? Do you fear people saying negative and horrible things about you? God needs to be the one you fear. What do you fear inwardly? Look, look, we are good at saying we don't fear. You know, it's I, you know, sometimes you'll talk to a teenage, uh, maybe a teenage boy, and I'll be like, I don't, I'm not scared of anything. Okay, all right, let's set aside. <laughs> all of your, you know, strength and power and and being braggadocious. Let's set all of that aside. Let's be honest because there's always something we fear inwardly. What do we fear inwardly? What do we fear inwardly? So trust in God above everything else inwardly. Or put it this way. Let's, Let's state it this way. Inwardly. Expect and be prepared for people to let you down, double cross you, hurt you. Put all, inwardly, put all your trust in God. 
inwardly fear God, not man, inwardly love God supremely. And realize you have no continuing city here. Everything here is going to burn up. This is not your home. You're just a pilgrim. So do not inwardly set your affection on things here because this is not the continuing city. We're looking for a city somewhere else. And that's a reference to the book of Hebrews. And wherever you are, you are a foreigner and a pilgrim. So that's what we need to know inwardly. And just think about this. Inwardly, if, if you think about this, inwardly, we, we should not draw, draw, we should not arrive at a strong attachment to people because people will ultimately hurt us. We need to not draw, a, draw we, not, we need, do not need to have or be drawn to a strong attachment to things here because we're pilgrims and strangers, but we are to have a strong attachment to God, loving him, trusting him, and fearing him. So I'm going to read all of this together again. Put all your trust in God. Let him be your fear and your love. He himself shall answer for you and will do in all things what is best for you. You have not a continuing city here. And wherever you are, you are a foreigner and a pilgrim. Neither shall you ever have rest unless you do Unless you be most inwardly united with Christ, you will not have any true rest or peace until you are most inwardly united unto Christ. Until you are inwardly united to Christ, you will not have no rest. You will have no peace. You will be tossed to back and forth. It will be restlessness, a lack of peace, worry, anxiety, anger, depression, discouragement, fear, and everything else. Inwardly, you have to be united to Christ. Inwardly, you have to be committed and drawn and cl- close to Christ. You're trusting in him. You fear him. You love him. You're not, you don't have an affection to this world because you know you don't have a continuing city here. You know you're a stranger and a pilgrim here. Now, I'm going to stop right there. We didn't get very far. But those are some powerful thoughts. And sometimes you have to just let those thoughts, leave them there so that they can breathe, so that you can feed upon them and think upon that. The external and the internal. What's going on in your internal spiritual life, inside, not outside, okay? I know you know all the right words to say. You've been to church. You know when to say amen. You know when to say praise God. You know, you need, you know when to say everything's wonderful. You know all the right words to say, all the catchphrases. You know how to smile. You know how to look. You know, you've got the game down. But what's going on inside of us? It's that inward part that sometimes we cover up with a lot of garbage. And then sooner or later, the inward manifest itself in a devastating way. That's what we have to consider. All right, I'll stop right there. You can email me your thoughts. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. All right, thanks for listening. I'm going to try to do at least one more thing before I leave. I'm going to try. I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but I'm going to try to do one more thing. I'm trying to I'm trying to balance this out with a number of things today, trying to do a number of things. So hopefully something in all of the hours of broadcasting today, hopefully you've found something that's been beneficial. All right. I'll stop right there. Everyone have a great day. God bless.